When you get up in the air, it's just a totally different perspective. For as long as he can remember, Red Easter has loved to fly. So when a bright yellow ultralight went up for sale, he had to have it. On a clear, cold morning last November, Brett went to his community airport in Kent for a quick flight. I worked at 12. And I decided I had time for one lap around the pattern before I had to go to work. But mid-flight, the engine failed. And Brett knew he couldn't make it back to the airport. So I decided beforehand, if anything were to happen, like an engine failure, and I couldn't make it back to the airport, I was going to pick a lake. Brett picked Lake Morton, and down went his plane. I saw a big yellow object in the lake, and I thought, wow, that looks strange. From her lakeside home, Lori Urich couldn't believe her eyes. So I realized, oh my gosh, that was a plane crash. Brett had survived the crash, but his trouble was just beginning. So I'm in the lake, and um, it's an open cockpit aircraft, so I wear a heavy Carhartt jacket when I'm flying to try and keep warm. As soon as I got in the water, I tried to swim, and I realized the jacket was keeping my arms, from, my arms from moving. So I started to take the jacket off after I realized I couldn't swim with it on. And then without even realizing, it got caught in my gloves when I was taking it off. So then it's, my arms are stuck behind my back. The cuffs are like tucked into my gloves, and my hands are trapped back there. Couldn't swim at all at that point. And I yelled, help, help. So I just whipped open the door and ran down. I was in my pajamas. As Lori grabbed her kayak, Robert Thomas did the same from the other side of the lake. And I remember yelling, we got you, we're coming. Meanwhile, Brett was drowning. I remember going down, and I'd open my eyes, and it was just dark, gross water. I would just think for a second, kind of conserve energy, and then I'd kick up, take a big breath, and I would just keep doing that. He was yelling, but then he stopped yelling. And I got longer and longer, and the panic was getting less panicky. I was getting more comfortable, and that's not a good sign. That was a pretty, pretty heavy moment because it's like everybody found another gear. And we all started paddling harder. Started to give up a little bit, and right as I started to give up, she was right there. And Robert was there within seconds. So when I got there, I, he was just going under, and I was able to reach down and, and grab him. And he was just felt like a sewer cover, I, you know, like pulling up. We were talking about it like pulling up a halibut, you know, just dead weight. He was hypothermic. His lungs and stomach were full of water, but he was alive. Other neighbors showed up, and a flotilla paddled Brett to safety. To this day, no one knows exactly what went wrong in the air that morning. But one thing went right. Brett landed in the midst of heroes. Robert and I were the first ones there, but, um, you know, probably 20 people were there by the end, all with the same intent um, to, to help someone that was in need. And you got the right leg to save you because these people on this leg were not letting him go. 